Wow, the sky is full of stars tonight. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Baba. What were you looking at, Amir? Come here, Baba, and look at this. What is it? Look at the sky, Baba. It's it's so beautiful. Hmm, Masha Allah, it's really beautiful. Are you going to tell me a story tonight? Of course I will. Insha Allah, I think I will tell you the story of Prophet Shammil alayhi salam today. Masha Allah, that's great. Prophet Shammil, or Samuel alayhi salam, was a revered prophet and a seer. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Shammil alayhi salam. As time passed, the children of Israel started forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they committed many sins. They had a tyrant king who ill-treated them and spilled their blood. He dragged the country to frequent wars and depleted the resources of the country. The children of Israel used to go to war carrying the Ark of the Covenant with them. They did so because they believed that this Ark would bring them good luck. They won every war until one day the Philistine army snatched the Ark from them. Not only did they lose the Ark, they lost the war as well. When the king heard what happened, he suffered a heart attack and died on the spot. The children of Israel were now left without a king. They were now like a sheep without a shepherd. It was then that God sent them a prophet named Shammil alayhi salam. They were now very happy. They asked the prophet to appoint a strong leader so that they could fight against the Philistines and take back the ark. Prophet Shammil alayhi salam knew their weakness and warned them. I fear that you may refuse when the time of fight arrives. But the people assured the Prophet that they were ready to fight in the way of Allah. That night, the Prophet prayed to Allah for guidance. It was then that Allah informed the Prophet that he had selected a man named Talut to be their king. But the Prophet was confused now. How will I recognize this man? He asked God. Then God told him that Talut would come to Shammil in some time by himself. Shammil was instructed to hand over the control of the kingdom to Talut. Talut was a tall, sturdy and very intelligent man who lived with his father in a farm far away. He lived and worked with his father in that farm. One day, Talat, accompanied by his servant, were out looking for his missing donkeys. They traveled for many days searching for the donkeys, but they could not find them. Let us go back, said Talat to his servant. My father would have started worrying by now, and there are other animals to be taken care of. Master, replied the servant, this is the land where Prophet Shammil lives. I think we should go and pay him a visit. We can also ask him about the lost donkeys. Talut agreed that it was a good idea and went to meet the Prophet. On their way, they asked directions from some women carrying water. The women told them that they can find the Prophet's house on top of the mountain. Talut and his servant walked up the mountain as they had been told. When they finally arrived at the place, they saw a large crowd in front of the house of the Prophet. Talat saw Prophet Shammil alayhi salam standing in front of the crowd and immediately realized that he was indeed a holy man. The Prophet saw Talat standing at a distance and he recognized that Talat was the chosen one to become the king of Israel. Talat greeted the Prophet respectfully. He then asked the Prophet about his missing donkeys. Don't worry. Replied the Prophet, the donkeys are already on their way to your father's farm. The Prophet then informed Talat that Allah had chosen him to lead the children of Israel. The Prophet told him that Talut was to take charge of their affairs. He was to unite them under one banner and to protect them from their enemies. Talut was surprised by the sudden honor offered to him. It was also a huge responsibility. He told the Prophet that he didn't know anything about leadership. 
and neither did he have any wealth. But the Prophet calmed him by saying it was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Shammal introduced Talut as the next king to the children of Israel. But the people were not happy. He is from Benjamin's tribe, shouted one. He was not wealthy from birth, shouted another. How can he be a king over us when we have greater right to kinship than he? He does not have any wealth. But the Prophet answered them calmly, Allah has indeed appointed Talut as a king over you. He has increased him abundantly in knowledge and stature. Allah grants his kingdom to whom he wills. He is the all-wise. After a long argument, the people demanded that if the long-lost chest contained the belongings of Prophet Musa was restored, they would accept Talut as their king. Talut was appointed as the king and he immediately set about organizing his army. He ordered that only men free from responsibilities should join the army. He asked those building homes, those who were about to be married, and those who were engaged in business not to join the army. He put them through vigorous trainings and gave them strict rules to follow. After a few days, Talut set out for war against the Philistines. They traveled for many days and nights through the desert. After days of traveling, they reached the banks of a river. Talut decided to put his army to go through a test. You are allowed to drink water from the river, but only to quench your thirst. Not more than that, he ordered them. But the soldiers were really tired and many of them drank more than they needed. Talut was disappointed when he found this. He immediately discharged them for disobedience. He kept only those who had proved their sincerity. Like this, he put his army through several tests and by the time they came face to face with the Philistine army, there were only about 30 soldiers left with him. But Talut was not bothered. He believed in quality and not in numbers. He thought it was better to be a small band of true believers rather than a huge army of unreliable men. With this small army, he faced the Philistine army who were very strong and armed with better weapons. They were led by Goliath a mighty warrior from Philistine. He was a gigantic person known for his huge build and brute strength. A great number of Talut's men ran away when they saw such a huge army. What happened then? Who won the war? <laughs> I will tell you about that tomorrow. MashaAllah, that was such an amazing story. Now are you ready for the questions? Yes, I am. All right, now here's the first question. What did the children of Israel lose after their war with the Philistines? Hmm, was it because they had lost the ark? That's correct. Now tell me what did the children of Israel ask Prophet Shammil alayhi salam? They asked the Prophet to appoint a king to lead them. Masha Allah, that's correct again. How did Talut find the Prophet? Hmm, Talut was searching for his lost donkeys and they wandered to the land where the Prophet lived. And why did they go and meet the Prophet? Talut's servant thought that the Prophet would be able to say where the donkeys were. Masha Allah, that's great! You are doing great, Amr. Thank you, Baba. Which tribe did Talut belong to? He belonged to the tribe of Binyamin. That's correct again. Now for the last question. Who was the leader of the Philistine army? It was Goliath. Inshallah, you did great, my son. I will see you again tomorrow with the story of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Good night, Baba. Good night, Amr. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. What are you doing, Amr? I was watching the ants, Baba. 
They are so amazing. Why are you so impressed with the ants? I don't know. Just look at them. In spite of being so small creatures, they are so disciplined. They always form a line while going anywhere. And they are also hard working. That's true, my son. Now tell me, have you heard the story of Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam and the ants? Huh? No, Baba. I haven't. Can you please tell that to me? Insha'Allah, I will tell you the story now. Come, let's both sit down on a rock here. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam. In the last episode, we saw how wise Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam was even when he was a child. After the death of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam became the king. He begged Allah for a kingdom such as none after him would have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him his wish. Besides the wisdom, Allah had blessed the Prophet with many abilities. He could command the wind as he pleased. And he could understand the language of birds and animals and even talk to them. The Prophet ruled the kingdom wisely. And at his command, they built huge temples, fortresses, towers and palaces. Once Prophet Suleiman and his army were passing through a valley while going to Ascalon. While they were passing through the valley, an ant saw the approaching army. He then cried out to warn the other ants, Run to your homes or else Suleiman and his army will unintentionally crush you. The Prophet was very amused to hear this. Even this small ant knows that I am a prophet, he thought. He then thanked Allah for saving the ant's lives. Suleiman had jinns and birds serving in his army as well. They were all kept in order and ranks and the prophet demanded strict discipline among them. That is why he was very upset to find that one bird, the hoopoe, was absent without his consent. However, the bird soon appeared to explain his absence. The little bird had been scouting in areas where the Prophet had not yet scouted. I have discovered something which you are not aware of. I am coming from Sabah with important news. The Prophet's anger subsided and he became curious. The bird continued, Sabah is ruled by a queen named Bilqis who has plenty of everything, even a splendid throne. But in spite of all this wealth, they are worshipping the sun instead of Allah. The Prophet wanted to test if the hoopoe was saying the truth, so he sent a letter to the queen. The bird carried the letter to the kingdom of Bilqis. The hoopoe dropped the letter in front of the queen and flew away to hide. The queen opened the letter and... She read the greetings from the Prophet. The Prophet had also asked her to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Queen was very disturbed, so she summoned her advisors. They told her that even though their country had the strength to wage a war, they wanted her to arrive at a peaceful settlement. Then they came up with an idea. They decided to send their messengers to the Prophet's palace on the pretext of carrying gifts. They asked the messengers to learn about the Prophet's army and kingdom. When the messengers arrived at the Prophet's palace, they realized that Saba was nothing compared to the Prophet's kingdom. They were surprised to see the lions, tigers and birds serving in the army. And when they walked into the palace, they realized that Saba's wealth was nothing compared to the Prophet's. Even the floors of the palace was made of sandalwood and gold. 
Suleiman realized that the messengers were here to gather information about him. When the messengers offered the gift, they were shocked to see the Prophet's reaction. The Prophet told them, Allah has given me enough wealth and a large kingdom. He has even made me a prophet. He then asked them not to open the covers of the gifts and to take them back. He also sent a message to the queen warning to destroy their country if she didn't accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The queen's envoy returned with the gifts and gave her the message. They also told her about the wonderful things they had seen. Instead of taking offense, she decided to visit the Prophet. She asked one of the messengers to inform the Prophet that she was on her way to meet him. Accompanied by her royal officials and servants, she left Saba. When Suleiman heard that the queen of Saba was on her way, he decided to test her. He asked the jinn standing before him if they could bring the throne of Bilqis before the queen reached. One of the jinn placed the throne before him within the blink of an eye. He then had the throne disguised to test whether the queen would accept it in its changed condition. When Bilqis arrived at the palace, she was welcomed with pomp and ceremony. The prophet then asked her pointing at the throne if this belonged to her. Bilqis was confused. She looked at the throne again and again. After much confusion, she said, It looks so. It resembles mine very much. The prophet judged that she was intelligent and diplomatic. He then invited her to the great hall. The floor of this hall was laid in solid glass. When the queen entered the hall, she thought this was water, so she lifted her skirt lightly from the fear of wetting it. The Prophet then informed her that this was actually glass and not water. Bilqis was amazed. She had never seen such things before. She realized that she was in the company of a very knowledgeable person who was not only a great ruler but also a messenger of Allah. When she returned to Saba, she understood that the sun which they worshipped was nothing but one of Allah's creations. She repented, gave up worshipping the sun, and asked her people to do the same. Suleiman lived amidst glory and all creatures obeyed him. His death, like his life, was also unique. One day the Prophet was sitting holding his staff, overseeing the jinns working at a mine. The Prophet died sitting in that position. For a long time, no one was unaware of his death. As he was sitting erect, the jinns continued to work in the mine thinking that the Prophet was watching over them. They kept working for many days like this. Many days later, a hungry ant began nibbling at the Prophet's staff. It continued to do so, eating the lower part of the staff, until it fell out of the Prophet's hand. When the body was no longer supported by the staff, it fell down. Mashallah, that was an amazing story. I'm glad you liked it, my son. Now, shall I ask you a few questions? Yes, Baba, I'm ready. All right, now tell me what were the special powers of Suleiman alayhi salam? Hmm, the Prophet to understand the language of animals. And he could command the winds. Great, that was right. Now for the next question. When the Prophet was marching through the army, did the ants think that the Prophet would kill them intentionally? No, the ants realized that he was a Prophet. That's why he shouted that the Prophet may kill them unknowingly. That's correct again. Now tell me why did the hoopoe go missing? Hmm, the hoopoe was scouting the lands for the Prophet. And it had found the kingdom of Saba. That's right again. What was the message that the Prophet sent to the Queen of Saba? Hmm. The Prophet sent his greetings and also asked the Queen to submit to Allah. And did the Queen submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not at first. She sent gifts to the Prophet hoping to please him. She asked the messengers to find more about their army. Why didn't the Prophet accept the gifts? The Prophet told them that he had received better gifts from his God 
and asked them to take it back. Did Bilqis get angry when her gifts were rejected? No. It was then that she decided to pay him a visit. And what did she realize when she met the Prophet? She realized that the Prophet was not only a knowledgeable person, but also a messenger of the God. Masha Allah, you gave all the right answers today, my son. I will see you tomorrow with another story. Goodbye. Goodbye, Baba.